Okay, I made a slight mistake. Let's see if I can correct it. Notice I misspelled initialize as initicize. So let's go up here and let's refactor our method and rename it. So we're going to say initial well, initialize Okay, so instead let's say super initialize and we save it and then rename it. Let's see if it works this time. Refactor method, rename, initialize. Now the selectors are not equivalent. Okay, so we'll do it manually. We'll just go ahead and type it in initialize, save it and then remove this method that was never actually being used in the first place. Now if all goes well, we'll now do a super initialize and create an input value. So let's refresh it and see what happens. Yep, there we go. Of course I don't think I wanted 1.3 anyway, but that's trivial to change. See, even in the wiki markup version it automatically has changed when we refresh the, the browser. So we really want that to be an integer because we're going to be working with fractals, or fact, with um, factorials. So we save it, and again, okay, moving right along, we're going to go back to our test component where we have the desired behavior, and notice we've got this thing called callback handle value. Well, we don't have a handle value routine in um, our new component. Render form on. There we go. But we're going to call it handle value. So it's going to accept A single parameter called value. So let's make a new method called handle value. Value. What are we going to do in that method? Well, why don't we just set it to, oh, I don't know, um, value. What is it? Input value. No, make it output value. Output value colon equals value factorial. And that will, when we save it, say that's an unknown variable. So let's make an instance variable. And now we go back to our form render, look at it some more, and we can go ahead. that. We've got a red which in, a red text which indicates a syntax error. So we're going to add a semicolon to make that a cascade. Remember a cascade sends each message after the semicolon to the same uh, object. So it's sending value to text input and it's sending callback to text input. I believe that's what it's doing. We can test that. Is this going to accept it as proper syntax? Yes it does. So one way or the other it should work the same. Save it. And while we won't see a change we could if we wanted do something like uh, in handle value, we could say 
inspect uh, value inspect or rather how about output value inspect save it and now if we put a 10 in here and press return lock back Ooh, okay, it didn't understand factorial, so it should be value as integer, as integer factorial. Now let's save it again and see if we can... Notice we have error messages coming in on our web page. There's actually a way of using a Smalltalk-like browser to program Smalltalk from within the web page, but I prefer not to do that. So right now all we're getting is um, error messages and I return to the Smalltalk uh, development system in my computer directly to edit things. So I changed value to value as integer, factorial, saved it, It's not displaying anything, but uh -huh. it's not calling it. I have again the wrong message name. Save it again. Delete this handle value. Small talk is so forgiving. Just delete it as is. Ink. Delete it. Yes. Okay. Now when we do it and press return, it's going to say not understood handle value. So again, I have to go back and change things. But notice it's still not crashing anything. It's just saying I don't understand what you want. So go back to render form, handle value. Save it. Go back to refresh. Start over, perhaps. Go to demo. And it's apparently not getting to my handle value because if we put a self halt in here, I'm guessing it's not going to change. Let's go. Nope, it did. Okay. So we are indeed getting where we need to be. Let's debug. We're in handle value. For some reason I wasn't getting the handle value expect. I don't know why. Inspect. So, but we can now look at uh, output value, which is nil. We continue stepping through. This is going through this whole transformation process to turn a text string into an integer. And now, finally, output value equals 10 factorial. And if we step into it, we get our inspect window, which is what I expected in the first place. So let's go back a step. Remove the halt. Save it. And let's see if it works this time. Come on. You know you can do it. There we go. It was accepting it from a keyboard enter rather than the keyboard return. 
Okay, so now we can indeed inspect and see we're getting what we expected. All right. Well, this is taking longer than expected, but you can see that small talk is very forgiving. Let's proceed with the next step. Back to our form content on. We're going to add a new line, HTML break. We're going to create a text area called result. It's going to have a little bit of text next to it, the name result. And then we're going to have an output area. whose output name, if we did it right, let's save this first, unmatched quote, let's not save it first. Let's just get out of here, discard the changes, and go back to what our in value is doing. Input value equals an object, handle value, output value, that is indeed what we wanted to name. Go back here to form content, remove our quotes where they are needed, And now when we save it, it's going to add an HTML break, add a bit of text named result, and create a text area that is to say a form output block, HTML output block, um, text block, which is going to be 10 rows uh, down and 60 rows across, and it's going to have below it a submit button with the name of the input value as string followed by factorial. And we save it. Sure enough, no mistakes this time, thank heavens. Now we refresh and we get another error message. Does not understand output value. Okay, let's move down. Self output value. Okay. So why is it not understanding output value? What do we name our instance variable? Output value as opposed to output value. Okay, so back to how handle value, we're going to make it output value, output value, save it, and it's going to declare an instance variable of that. Uh, nope. We're going to cancel because I misspelled the second one. Output value. Now we're going to save it. And now we have two variables. One is defined and one isn't. So we're just going to save that again. And now let's proceed. We're in the debugger. We edited things. Proceed. All right. What do we have here? The result is nothing so far. Why is that? Because we go back up here, handle value, output value equals value is integer factorial, and in the form content we have it's called self output value, yes, input value, handle value, it should be really doing everything it's supposed to. Let's try it one more time. And this time we have another un not understood. Output value is not defined, apparently, according to us. Ah, uh, you know what that is? That's because we still don't have a accessor method for output. This is not how I planned on doing this tutorial, but you can see I've made all sorts of mistakes and the website is still live. So let's go back up here and let's create some new accessors. One for output value. And it's going to create them. And now we can go to proceed. And sure enough, 
if we enter it again, we should get a 1. And if we enter a 10, and then put it again, we get a 10 factorial. Now we still have little errors. See, 100 isn't setting things the way I wanted. When we press this, we get what we want, but it's still not telling us that we're looking at 100 factorial and it's not updating this. So let's go back and look at our logic. Okay, so we're sending in handle value, or we're sending in input value from here, and we're doing a callback saying handle do the method handle value with value from here. This is our value we're putting in. Okay, now here we're displaying the result as output value and displaying a submit button with the text string input value as string. So why is this not working? Input value equals an object. Input value. Handle value. Uh -huh. Let's go back to our test component and see what we did differently. Okay, so what we're missing apparently is we didn't reset our input value. So let's go back up here to handle value and say input value colon equals value. And now, if I understood the logic correctly, we go back and we refresh. And there we go. Do you see? We now have an input value of 10, a result of 3,628,800, and our button is now lay labeled 10 factorial, which is what we got from the input value. And we put it to 100 and press enter. that as well. Now over here, let's refresh what we have in the wiki. Same component, and sure enough, now the behavior is the same. So we have two different objects, one being accessed from Seaside as a component, and the other being accessed from our wiki as a component being specified by some wiki markup and after much trial and tribulation and, and many errors that would have blown any other development system I'm aware of out of the water um, we now have roughly the behavior we were looking for.